All right, we're going to try and talk about an oscilloscope um, and how you can use it to measure signals that vary with time, so voltage versus time signals. I'm going to try and talk about everything here except for probe calibration. We'll do a separate video if needs be. Okay, so here we go. I've got a function generator that's going to put an AC signal, alternating current signal into here, and so I'm going to go ahead and connect this. This black clip is actually connected to the ground so you know in an electrical cable you plug it in like this there's the three prong so we've got this black is connected to ground and there this red is connected to hot all right great so now in this case we don't really need to look at this circuit too much except for when we connect these probes and let me explain that so a DMM measures voltage and we, we saw a training video on that this scope here also measures voltage and so think of this as a DMM, but it just outputs the signal in real time as it fluctuates. So it's basically measuring voltage, just like a DMM. So now these cables look a little bit funky. It's got a BNC. I'm going to plug this into here to what's called channel 1. Okay, and now when you look on this one, you might not see this. But see this little spring-loaded hook thing? So right in here, there's actually a tiny little hook. That's going to be like the red of the DMM, and this little alligator clip is like the black. Now what's tricky about using scopes is that the scope is also plugged into the wall, and so if you plug them into different outlets, you can actually get ground errors and things like that, but we'll talk more about that at the end. So for now, I'm just going to make sure I connect the black to the black so both wall socket grounds are connected together. We'll see what happens. And I'm just going to measure across this resistor here. Okay. And so, let's see here. Uh, again, now what do we want to talk about? Let's talk about horizontal controls. So I'm letting this thing auto range. Go ahead and take a look at the screen. Here are the horizontal controls. Notice what position and seconds per division do. Look carefully. They do subtle things. When I do the position, that's shifting this curve left or right that shifts where the curve starts. So it's changing the start position. Okay. Uh, you could also think of this changing what the position is at the origin, and that's what this mode is right now. Seconds per division changes the scale. So notice this is a very different scale horizontally. And I'll go to a, a smaller one. Oops, there we go. All right, and so that's changing the scale left and right. So position changes where it is. Scale changes how much one of these blocks on the screen is. So what is a division? From right here to right there, one big block is called a division. So this would be one division, two divisions, three divisions, four divisions, five. Five on the other side, there's ten time divisions all the way across. Notice this time right here. This time right here indicates how many seconds correspond to one block or one division. So in this case, one block is 1.00 milliseconds. If I change the seconds per division, we should see that number change. Now one block is 2.5 milliseconds. And so we see this gets more crowded. If I go the other way, give it a sec. Oh, did I click something there? Oh, my circuit came unconnected. Look at this. Circuit came out. Whoops. Get that back in there. Sorry, I bumped the cable. Now let's, okay, so now it's at 500 milliseconds per division, and if we keep going the other way, come on, 250. So now each division is 250. So this is a good scale to see. Notice it's about one, two, three, four of these, which corresponds to four times 250 or uh, one millisecond, and that corresponds to one kilohertz frequency. So that's good. Now, similarly, there's the vertical settings. Now, look carefully here. Horizontal, there's only one horizontal to rule them all. This is the vertical position and vertical volts, and that's for each channel separately. So if we had more than one signal connected here, we could do that in a minute, this would change the uh, up, down, or vertical position. It's not changing the signal, it's just changing where it's displayed. Again, it is not changing the actual signal it's changing where it's displayed on the screen. This will change the scale used. So now we're talking about volts per division vertically. 
So this was seconds per division horizontally, volts per division vertically. So right now we're at five volts per division. So this is about one, two blocks tall. That's about 10 volts uh, tall or a five volt amplitude. 10 volts peak to peak, five volt amplitude. And notice if I change the setting, oops, the other way, now it says this is two volts per block. Well, this is about a half a block, one, two, three, four, and another half a block. That makes five total blocks. Again, we still have 10 volts. So these knobs do not change the signal. They just change how it's displayed, and I knocked it out again. It's going to be a long uh, session here. Let me hook to this other one. Here we go. All right, so that's that. That's how the vertical and horizontal works. Uh, the probe, there's a 1 times and a 10 times probe. We're going to use 1 times uh, probe all day. You can use that if you need to magnify small signals. And notice, if I hit this channel 1 menu button, this gives me some options. So I can change from 1 times to 10 times probe, and now I want to get back to 1 times. So there's different types of probes. This allows you to uh, use those. Great. Um, Auto range, you've seen me hit this many times. This is kind of like get out of jail free. If I hit auto range, it will go and will pick a range it thinks is suitable. Now what happens here is sometimes uh, you'll get a sloppy signal. And every once in a while, if your signal is floating all over, there's a useful button here, run stop. So uh, if you get a signal that's floating all over the screen, sometimes you may need to hit run stop. And that pauses things and takes a... a, a screen capture at one split second in time and that can help you read a messy signal. Usually that's caused by bad triggering. Alright, so now it's going again. Uh, we've talked about divisions. The measure button is really cool. So rather than count the blocks all the time, if you have a good signal you can hit the measure button. And notice if Angus you could make sure they can see this on the screen, alright? Mm -hmm. So you can see different types of measurements. Here's that peak to peak measurement from this bottom uh, from the trough to the crest, that's peak to peak, about 10 volts. This reads the frequency. I trust this number a lot more than this number. Again, I trust the scope number more than I trust the function generator number. It's got the period. Hey, sweet, we're pretty much right on one millisecond. And you can get the max voltage or the minimum voltage, all kinds of different things. If you want to change that measurement, you can click in here, and you can change the source to channel 1, 2, 3, or 4. That's one of these different channels here. Uh, you can even do math. We don't need to do that. And you can change the type of measurement. You can get the RMS value. There we go. Or you can do the min, etc., etc., etc. I'm going to get that back to peak to peak really quick. Whoops. Sorry about that. There we go. All right. And so there's measurements. Triggering. Triggering is tricky. So notice there's this section here for the triggering. What the triggering does is that tells the, the computer where to start displaying. Now you might be saying, didn't you already say that was based off these positions? They're related. So if I move this triggering up, look at this arrow here. Right now it's saying whatever point is at the center of the screen, start the waveform at this height at the center of the screen. Sorry if that's not making sense. I'm very tired. Okay, so again, the point is this arrow tells you, hey, at the middle of the screen, start the waveform here. And you might be saying, should that be on the rise or fall? You can actually hit the trigger menu and say, I want it to start when it's rising or I could start when it's falling. So again, it's starting at the same level. And if I stretch this out, you might be able to see it a little bit better. Notice it's starting right there at this height when it's falling, or I could change it to rising right there at this height when it's rising. Now, just to get this back. All right, let's get out of there. Uh, well, there's also different modes. DC coupling, we're going to use that as our default there's, uh, okay, let's, let's, let's not go into all these, but AC coupling is good. Uh, if you know you have AC signals and you might have a small DC offset that you need to get rid of, that's a useful mode. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it doesn't matter. Let's get out of this triggering menu. All right, and so, oh, whoops, let's, um, let's get out of here. Okay, so notice I hit auto rage when I couldn't figure out how to escape out. That's a good trick to know. Now check this out. I want to show you a deliberate mistake. I'm going to raise the triggering level up, 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 raising the triggering level up. And watch what happens when I get the triggering level too high. Right now, the waveform is having trouble reading. Why? You're telling the computer, or this, this scope, anytime the waveform hits this level and is rising, 
start the wave. Well, it never gets to that level, so it never knows where to start. This is a time where run stop can be useful. When I hit run stop, now it freezes that, and you say, oh, it never gets to that height. My triggering level is too high. So I'm going to lower my triggering level down. I'll hit run stop again, and now it'll snap. So again, if you see a screen going like this, it's probably your trigger level. Try to adjust that halfway. All right? Um, and uh, grounding, we talked this about this a little bit. You've got to be careful. Check this out right here. Now, and this is the last bit, everybody. So in this case, look at this. We know that this is connected to black, and this is connected to red. So this one is connected to ground in the wall socket. I also know that this is connected to ground in the wall socket. What if I try to measure this the wrong way? Okay, look on the screen. No measurement. Not good. Okay, if I switch these, the same thing. It's a little different than a DMM. If you screw it up, you get nothing. Notice all I did was flip the leads, and now we get a signal. Why is this happening? Well, think about it. If I connect this the wrong way, what I have done is I've said both of these points are connected to ground. This resistor has been short-circuited through the wall. Right? So this is connected to ground. This is connected to ground. This resistor is not in the circuit. There's no voltage across it. All right. Let's call that good.